we respectfully request the Sangha great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach and guide us how ten birth and death leave suffering and attain bliss and quickly realize non-birth. <laughs> Tin Jiang Yeo Vào Lung Yao Dao Nga Mung Như Há Liêu Sân Thoa Tư Ly Hô Đà Hạp Lạ Tốc Chương Vô Sân how much of the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one? Namo Sananto Suche Do Ye La Hodi San Miao San Puto Sye. Namo Tadakta To Ya Da Ya La Hade Tam Miao Tam Bo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma, a hundred thousand million aeons, is difficult to encounter. Now that I'm able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom that thus come one true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa Bai chen wan che nan zao yu Wu O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Six patriarch, great master Shinhua, all good monks and nuns, and good and all good no advisors of me to fall. Chu fo pu sa liu zu shi fu shang ren ge wei chu jia ren ge wei shang zu shi me to fall. Chu phật bồ tát khấn thư lục tổ hòa thượng thiên hóa quý thầy cô và quý vị quý vị thiện trí thức ai gì đó phật. Uh, hello everyone, today is the 24th of June, 2023. We're here in, at the Dharma Tritri Temple to continue discussing the Sixth Patriarch Sutra, Chapter 6, which is about repentance and reform. Hmm. Why do you figure that the Sixth Patriarch, who is a specialist in teaching Chan, uh, would teach about repentance and reform? What does it have to do with Chan? Anyone? What do you think? Why does a Chan practitioner want to learn about repentance and reform? What's repentance and what is reform? Way bound. 
Thank you, Master. Uh, because if we repent and if we repent and reform, uh, there will be less obstructions when we practice Chan. Okay, few obstructions when we practice Chan. Anyone else? Oh, uh, Uh, um, uh, I, I think there's a certain point where you won't make progress or be able to stay around and cultivate if you don't repent for your obstructions and uh, reform them. All right. Anyone else? You too. Thank you, Master. Uh, I'd like to offer my sincere gratitude for our YouTube audience, who is currently 20 uh, audience members and growing quickly. Um, Samson Lau comments, uh, to help remove obstructions in our cultivation. Yeah, remove obstruction in cultivation. Okay, very good. Anyone else? Yes, seven. Uh, repentance is uh, f f just uh, like say in my example, I, I I broke precepts by doing repentance, and uh, it helps me to uphold the precepts, and that will. It's important to to study Chan. We need to uphold the precepts. Okay. Anyone else? Why do you want to repent and reform when you practice Chan? When you cultivate it all, why do you want to repent and reform? Wei Mountain. Thank you, thank you, Master. Um, I believe the Sixth Patriarch taught about repentance and reform as a part of Chan uh, cultivation to help us uh, let go of our attachments. I know when I have something that I want to repent about, uh, I can feel bad about it, and I don't want to hold on to feeling bad uh, for too long. So being able to repent helps me let go of the attachment of what I did, and reform provides me something constructive to do to, uh, to change my behavior moving forward. Okay, very good. Anyone else? Yes, six. Master, to, um, to repent and reform to help us uh, concentrate better. Concentrate. How does better. it help concentration? Because if you create uh, offense and the mind scatter, and then when you reform, then you keep the precepts, so that is uh, it's one form of the mind is not scattered anymore, so it's more concentration there. Okay, so when you commit offenses, your mind is scattered. So when you repent, it makes your mind less scattered. All right, anyone else? For all the above reasons, you know so much, you know a lot. Because to summarize it, to repent and reform works in your spiritual practice. What is repent? To repent is that the awareness, the knowledge of what you did is wrong. And therefore, you want to repent. You say, I admit what I did was wrong. If you're willing, not willing to admit what you did is wrong, then uh, you will continue to create more obstructions for yourself. Okay, it's a very simple act. If you know that you realize that what you did is not, it's an offense, then you want to uh, acknowledge that. Okay, uh, repent here, uh, 
is, is, uh, is the acknowledgement not only uh, to someone uh, like you in, in, the, in the Hinayana practice, you repent, it's something called a face-to-face -face repentance, where you, you make, let's say, a confession to a, another person, not a Sangha. Okay, and that's, that's the acknowledgement that you, you committed an offense. But much more important than that, Hinayana fails to emphasize the fact that you, when you do that act, it's much more important to admit to yourself, to recognize that it's wrong. Okay? Yeah. And, and that's why, unless you yourself are willing to admit to yourself that it's wrong, then you will continue to create offenses like that. This is what happens to the people, for example, who we continually commit the same offenses over and over again. It's because they're, they, they're telling yourself, yeah, it's okay, it's no big deal. And that's why, uh, that's why you know, when people go to confession, for example, they say, forgive me, Father, I've uh, lied to uh, and so and so. And, and, uh, and it's more of, of a formality than yourself in your heart, knowing that you disapprove of it yourself. That's the meaning of repentance. You, yourself, in your heart, disapprove of it. Agree or disagree? People tend to stress more on the formality of it, like there's a repentance process, or, hin or Hinayana, they have a face-to-face -face repentance. Or Mahayana, we have like great compassion repentance, we have mantras we can recite to repent and so forth, and we have many, many more repentance processes, okay? However, the most important one, the foundation of repentance is that you yourself recognize it's wrong. Are you willing to admit to yourself it's wrong. It's not a formality. You disapprove of yourself. Okay, that's the meaning of repentance. If you're willing to do that, then Whatever you do, there's a process where in Hinayana you go and see someone to repent. In Mahayana you go and do great compassion repentance, do many, many types of repentances and so forth. But that, that the, the, the core of the repentance is you are disapproving yourself not about people judging you, not important, not that important. People approve of you or don't and not judge you. It's much more important for you not to judge yourself, not to disapprove of yourself. Why not? Why is it important? It pertains to Chan. This is not explained by the Chinese. It's just say, it works. Historically, in Buddhism, they did the repentance and reforms. They work very well for their spiritual practices. So that's why it's no need to explain to you. However, in our 21st century, you guys need a reason. You need to have a clear understanding of why we do these things. So why is the fact that you disagreeing with yourself, never mind about disapproving yourself, just disagreeing with yourself. You know, when you, when you 
lie to someone, what happens? When you manipulate someone, what happens? Hmm? Let's say you're a salesman and you try to sell a TV to an old lady who doesn't need it. Anyone happen to anyone? And she'll so say whatever it takes to get her to buy the TV. All right? Yeah. And you succeed and you get um, your bonus and get your, you meet your quota and so forth. But what happens to you? And at the end of the day, you look at yourself, okay, yeah, I'm okay, I brought um, money home to feed my family, but this is somewhere in your psyche, in your soul, you said, let's not go there. That's off limits. You know, there's a portion there that says, what I did is wrong to sell TV to an old lady who doesn't need it. That's wrong. We all have that kind of conscience, don't we? We all have this kind of conscience, all of us. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are. It could be black face, white face, doesn't matter. We all have this thing here that comes from our Buddha nature. It says, that's wrong. We know it's wrong. We disapprove of yourself. Agree, disagree. Does it happen to you? You never lied before? You never tried to sell TVs to an old woman who doesn't need it? Something similar like that? We all have done it, right? In our lives. Yes? And our, you know, we go home and it bothers us a little bit. Yes or no? And if you do it often enough, then you learn to ignore it very quickly. Yes? Okay. Stay in your corner. Shut up. Yes, four. Master, I, I can give an example of this that happened today, and I actually should repent as well. Um, so earlier, about an hour ago, um, my son was complaining that his tablet ran out of uh, battery. So I took it downstairs to charge. And then, um, then he came up and asked me, like, where's my iPad? And he was very angry, so I lied to him and I told him that uh, someone took it, and um, he was he was okay with it. Uh, and then later I told him that like uh, you know I took it, and then he got angry, and so then I told him, okay, well maybe someone else took it, um, and so then he calmed down, and then um, then he was happy for part of the day. Um, but I know like what I did was to try to get him to calm down, and that's probably the wrong thing to do. So I. I I repent. Um. It's not so bad to lie to your son. <laughs> I feel bad if I lie to an old lady. <laughs> it's a lot worse. Okay, you two here. Never mind. <laughs> uh, it turns out your son is manic. So I notice that every time we have a uh, before the lecture, the manic goes starts pulling his strings. You notice that it started becoming noisier and noisier and noisier and noisier. Okay, and so, uh, so, um, so usually we, we wait until the, the ghost misbehaves, then we slap him a few times. Okay, and then he shuts up. But today I got in, I knew he would, you know, he started making uh, noises already or slapped it right away. <laughs> That's why he's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, it's okay, and that's uh, that's pretty minor. It's it's uh, not it's not necessarily an offense what you did. Okay, it's extreme for your for your part to feel that you have to repent for that. It's it's uh, an acceptable expedient device. Hmm? to keep him out of trouble, and keep you out of trouble, okay? So I wouldn't worry about it too much, meaning it's okay to do it, okay? Hmm. 
uh, in your case. Uh, so uh, the point I'm trying to make is that it doesn't matter who you are. When you do something that you know is wrong, okay? In particular, I'm talking about manipulative people. When you manipulate people, no one knows. They say, oh, I don't know. Okay? And what happens to them is that people are by nature manipulative. They do that because for survival reasons, for whatever, okay? But what happens is they become numb to it. Okay? And because of that, it's very difficult for them to meditate because, because they disapprove themselves because people cannot put the fingers on them. You know? Oh. And what happened is that uh, that's a violation of the principle of do not lie. Do not lie meaning, uh, meaning that you know, when you manipulate pe to people, when you lie to people, you fool yourself. You do convince yourself it's okay to do it. Okay? And when you do that, uh, it boils down to your Buddha nature. Somewhere, it's a little voice in your, inside of you that says, I don't know. I disapprove it, of it myself. Yes or no? Hmm? Happens to all of us. And when it happens to you, okay, there's hope for you. Please don't ignore it. If you choose to ignore it, boy, are you in trouble. Because we all have a clear sense of what's right and wrong. Okay? Our guts tell us it's right and wrong. But the guts is your Buddha nature. The Buddha nature says, no, that's not correct. That's not right. Just because you can get away with it, we can get away with it, doesn't mean it's okay. Because we disapprove of ourselves. Okay? Doesn't matter. You can be numb to it because you do it too often. You say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. No one knows. It's okay. I got away with it this time and so forth. I've become better at manipulating people and so forth, lying to people. So, so it's okay. I, I, I get by. But it doesn't matter. You have a problem. Chinese call Xin Bu An. Bu An. Your mind is not at peace. It criticizes itself. You know, if someone approves of you, disapproves of you, it's easy. All you have to do is find a way to appease that person and kiss up to that person and so forth, right? That's superficial. Okay? The rules of society, get along. People need to approve you, okay? Uh, but the most important person you need, they need to approve you is yourself. Okay, and if you don't approve of yourself, then when you meditate, guess what happens? It pops up. It will pop up, guaranteed. It will come back. So, oops, I got away with it. Oops. That's seen bu an is an issue when you meditate, because it pops up constantly. 
Yes, four. Uh, Master, does the same thing happen if you lose your uh, temper internally but don't express it? Yes, you disapprove of yourself. The key is that your Buddha nature knows it's wrong and you disapprove of yourself. You cannot get away. You can fool others. You can get away from others, hide in a corner, okay? But when you meditate, when you're with yourself, you want to try to clear your head, that will come up again. And the disapproval is very deep, deep-seated. You cannot get away from it. You cannot ignore it. And that prevents you from meditating for very, very long. For so, so, so for some people who are manipulative, meditation is a, is a struggle for them. Of course, we have other Dharma doors, but the point is that, the point is that, uh, the point is that uh, we want to repent because, because you admit to yourself, okay, that yes, I am right, this is, this is not proper for me to do that, okay? You need to acknowledge it. Whereas manipulative people or people who lie for, who have to lie to, for, to make a living and so forth, like uh, managers do, uh, you know, uh, like so forth, you know, we, this is what we do. Therefore, we become desensitized to it. They will have will struggle with meditation. So the great master Hui Neng recognizes that. He says, this is a big issue for many of us. We have so many reasons why we would create offenses, okay? whether it's to make a living, whether it's to protect your ego, whether it's to get what you want, okay? Uh, all those things. We commit offenses, and we know it's wrong, and we disapprove of it ourselves. If you are such people, then there's hope. If you say, oh, it's okay, it's okay, no one knows, no one knows, it's okay. No one, it's okay, I got away, I can get away with it, like worldly people do. Worldly people, behavior is that they say, if I can get away with it, why not? Yes? Whereas in Chan here, you need to face yourself. Yes, you got away with it, with those people, but you have to face yourself. Your biggest judge is yourself your own Buddha nature. Yes, Seven. Thank you, Master. Sorry to interrupt. The, the sun in the Buddha hall is uh, we, very echoey. We can barely hear you. I'm sorry. And uh, if this could be adjusted. Okay, then we could ask the children to Keep a little bit lower. Oh, no, not the, not the children. children. It's the really the echo. Is the echo okay? Then fix the echo. Okay, lower the volume a little. Thank you. Hmm. All right. It's still echo. There's quite a bit of an echo here. Could you lower the volume, please, a little bit more and more? And more. There you go. Slightly better. Okay. Tell us if it's still pretty bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so the repentance is 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 the acknowledgement that you have a reckoning 
with you with your Buddha nature, with your true self. Therefore, therefore, you want to face it. You don't want to ignore it because people who don't repent choose to ignore. Even though they know what they're doing is wrong, they choose to ignore it. Uh, and again, I stress the fact it's not the same as making a confession. Go to confession uh, no, and make a repentance or a confession to your padre or to your father and so forth. It's way beyond that what we're talking about. What we're talking about is that you face your own judge, yourself, your Buddha nature, who disapproves of it. Yes, four. Master, uh, so just to clarify my understanding, um, I know from the last six patriarch, one of the last six patriarch lecture, um, it was mentioned that we should be continuously monitoring our mind for transgressions um, or mental transgressions. And so if we have thoughts of harming, thoughts of greed, um, if these occur, then uh, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to uh, acknowledge that we um, have uh, bad behavior and then repent. We we'll um, come to that. The, this is what this chapter is about. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, we're coming to that. Okay. Anyone else? This is a principle behind it. We're talking about repentance, meaning that, I mean that, that without uh, your having a reckoning with your Buddha nature, your own self, your own gut feeling, your own instincts, okay, then it makes it very difficult for you to progress spiritually. Not about anyone else, it's about you. Why is it some people, they cultivate and they progress a lot quicker than you? Because they dare face themselves. Whereas you can't. That's why you're slower. You bury it. So that if you ignore, choose to bury it, it will pop up. Well, you are constantly disrupted in your spiritual practice because you disapprove of yourself. It won't go away. Any questions or comments? It's okay from a worldly perspective. We get, we get away with it, okay? But if you want to follow a spiritual path, then it's counterproductive. That's why you want to repent. All right? Meaning, have a reckoning with yourself. You look at yourself and say, no, that's not right. And you seek acknowledgement from someone, a person, a bodhisattva, and so forth. So it makes a huge difference. When you do a great compassion repentance, for example, there's no one looking at you, okay? You think, but the bodhisattvas, the Buddhas are looking at you. You can't hide. You talk to me, for example, you can fool me easily. I wouldn't know, okay? So that's why, that's why when you go to a confessional or you repent, uh, the, the six page chart will teach a little bit later. The, there's a reason, for, the reason why, uh, why that he, he needs to teach us this and his style of teaching. Now, this is the second time I explained this to you. Uh, this is about the fourth time I read this sutra, uh, and this section here, this very text. The first two times I didn't get it. OK? 
Okay. The last time I explained it to, to you to, uh, during this uh, six paycheck sutra lectures, I didn't get it either. Now, thanks to all of you, thanks to whatever pho we eat today. We ate today for lunch. Maybe it helped. Okay? Uh, everything helps. Now I realize that why he's teaching about this repentance here and what repentance really means. Okay? Hmm. What about reform? Reform is a natural consequence of repentance. If you repent properly, then, uh, then you will reform. Reform means what? I assure you, we are, we are breaking new grounds. The, the Chinese don't, don't, don't discuss it like this. The, the original Mahayana teaching, Buddhist teaching, is, uh, is still within the textbooks. They are not. We are elaborating a lot more because that's the spirit of the six patriarchs teaching. Yes, four. Oh, Master, does reform mean uh, we stop ourselves from re repeating the same mistake? Okay, you will not. You will not miss, commit the same mistakes, commit the same offenses. Anyone else? Comment from JC. Anyo Kesok,ke,we,nega,iran,jalmos,rage,tenunji,iuga,manako,pingere,tego,in,onga,pingere,ta,gata,puchin,jorul,pasumida,kerigo,che,jalmosi,poyosil,te,kegosil,chame,h
more than just changing a habit or changing a uh, something you do. I think it has more to do with changing who you are, like changing your personality. So what, once you've repented, you actually become a different person from that. Yes. Very good. Anyone else? Wei Maun. Uh, master, so uh, reform uh, in Vietnamese is cải biến is uh, improve upon it. Uh, so my question in this is whether this improvement is uh, immediately or this is gradual. Like we stop doing it and then we just stop it right immediately and then we never do it again or we gradually improve upon it. Good question. What do you think? Yes, Evan. Uh, if I would do it, I, I would do this uh, immediately. If I may, uh, I would like to repent and uh, reform right away. Okay. Today I, uh, today I offended He Fang. I told her to shut up and that's that's very unkind. I would like to repent to Master, to her Fang, and to the assembly. And I hereby would like to reform right away from now, this moment. Okay, anyone else? YouTube? Thank you, Master. Yes, um, we have a, a YouTube question along the same lines. And I would just like to uh, let our YouTube audience know that if this talk is beneficial to you, it not only helps our channel if you hit the like button, but also helps others encounter the Dharma. So please consider uh, liking the video. San Francisco Daniel asks, Master, does reform mean that one commits changes to one's undesirable behavior? Yes, it does. Anyone else? Any other comments? Uh, Master, I would like to comment on uh, instantaneous reform. Yes. I don't think it's possible except in the most extreme rare cases, personally. I think that's part of reform is to try and to keep trying and not quitting at changing your behavior. Do you think it's gradual? I think it can be faster or slower depending on how much change you're trying to uh, accomplish. Okay, very good. Excellent questions. Yes, seven. I have a question for me, myself. Uh, I have a tendency of when I look at my thoughts, I tend to overthinking. Uh, I tend to get stuck and overthink it. Um, so, Master, can you teach me how to look at our thoughts? but uh, do it uh, with a way that uh, not overthink? Or is there such a thing as uh, letting go uh, after looking at your thoughts? It depends on the person. A person like you is obsessive, and therefore you overthink, that's natural, because that's the way you're wired. Yes, Wei Mountain. Uh, I think sometimes it's uh, gradual uh, reform, and sometimes it's uh, sudden reform. Okay, so we have everything covered. Okay, he says uh, slow, some fast, some is 
sometimes slow, sometimes fast. And anyone, do I have anyone neither slow or fast? Okay. Mm. Typically, your, your reform, mm, whether it's slow or fast, depends on your level. The high level is instantaneous. The low level would be, would take time. Because you don't have the clarity of mind, the wisdom to repent. And reach into the proper depth for it to go away. So at your level, if, for example, give you graphically what it means, if your tendency to create offenses is, is deep, at your level, you try to repent, you can reach this deep based on your level, and then that's as far as you can go. That's all. That's reality. You can wish that it's instantaneous, it could be certain, could be, you know, forever, but it's all you can do. Intellectually, you say, I want to rewipe it all out, but actually, spiritually, you can only reach so far because your kung fu level, your samadhi level can help you penetrate so much. That's all you get. Is that clear? But at least you, get, you, you have a significant reduction already. And then you work on the next layers. Instead, if you're still up here, then you still have interference from a lot of junk that you're supposed to be able to shed. Am I making sense to you? It's all about you. That's all you're capable of doing. So if you really want to repent, you say, okay, I do not like myself for being like this. It's not about getting away with it. It's about whether you like yourself or not. You like it, no problem. It's your life. Okay, if you like yourself being that way, then there's no need to repent. Don't pretend to go to some say, hey, I, I you know, uh, I hope you can help me. It's, there's very little help if you are not, if you are not sincere, you're not willing to repent. Because the father says, you know, you are wrong and I, I'm, I'm glad you, con you confess to me. Then now you absolve. It doesn't work like that. In reality is that you need to cleanse yourself. It's like when your hands are dirty and you say to yourself, you know, it's clean, it's clean. When it's not clean, you stop yourself. That's all you're doing. The fact is that your hand is not clean. You say, I don't see a problem. Oh, this will go away pretty soon. You see, it's reality. I, I used to go to a temple where quite a few of them do this, by the way. They, every month they do repentance on the five precepts, violation of five precepts. And at first, it's very exciting. These people came and said, you know, this is my chance to repent and reform. So a lot of people showed up, okay? And they said, Master, I like to repent. I, so, so I'm very ashamed of it, and I like to repent. I like to reform. Okay? And pretty soon, it gets fewer and fewer people come because you cannot keep on repeating the same thing over and over again. <laughs> See the problem? Because... You cannot erase it completely. You see? See the problem with public repentances? You can only repent, reform so much. It's still more. 
And that's why public repentance in temple, to me, is sort of a show. It's not real. Repentance is you facing yourself first, not about getting approval from others. You need to approve of yourself. It's okay to behave like this. That's the main thing. We all have to ask ourselves, is it okay? Do I feel good about myself? Why am I like this? There's, because if, if you don't like yourself, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you still won't like yourself. Because you disapprove yourself. Money has nothing to do with it. Power has nothing to do with it. It's you, inside. He says, I don't like myself. Yes, way Mahon. Master, uh, I, I do have one problem. Um, since I know Buddhism when I was 13, I know that um, homosexuality is not a uh, acceptable behavior within the community of Buddhism, and it is a violation of the third precept. And I know back in the day, I went to the temple knowing that I was gay. I repent, I bow, I try everything that I can to ask myself, to ask the Buddha to help if I can be a straight person. So I have that thought and I fought myself a lot. Um, do you did to until today? I cannot keep the third precept because of that, and um, no matter what I try to do, it's still there. Okay, so what is the point? So I don't know if um, to accept myself as um, gay is not acceptable, or I have to be straight, or I have to do something that to change myself to fit with the mold with the precept in Buddhism, because that one is the violation of the precept. So can I rephrase the question? Can gay people become enlightened? <laughs> can we just stop beating around the bush? Can gay people become enlightened? Can, what is it, LGBTQ plus? <laughs> can they become enlightened? The Catholic Church has what? You can't, right? You cannot become a priest if you're a woman. Never mind. It's okay. Welcome to the DDT, by the way. It's a long drive. I said, did you think this is WMT? What, what you want? Temple? This is Dharma Treasury Temple, my friend. <laughs> it's a long drive. <laughs> He goes, typically goes to Wei Mountain Temple. You know, this is a famous Catholic Daniel. You don't recognize him in person. Yeah. 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 So, can L LGBTQ people become aligned? Absolutely. All of us have a Buddha nature. All of us can become enlightened. It's no difference. Yes, Way Mountain. Thank you, Master. I am so proud that Hung asked this question. I'm so supportive and thankful that he asked it so others can learn the answer. And I could not give a stronger plus one to your response. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, seven. And all of us have Buddha nature. Um, I also want to add that I think all of us have a little bit of LGBTQ in us. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. 
I missed it. I couldn't quite hear the answer. Uh, to add on, all of us has Buddha nature. I think all of us has a bit of LGBTQ in us too. No? Seriously? Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are some research out there to uh, support this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't speak for others. <laughs> you too. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, we have a question from Samson Lau. Samson asks, Master, how about actions we repent but have not been able to reform yet? Is there a proper way to reform so that we can change our actions? How do you reform? Each one of you have, have to find your own ways of reforming. This is personal. There's no formula for that. Okay? You have to decide for yourself how to more effectively reform. Okay? Meaning, how are you going to change so that you renew yourself? Reform is to renew yourself and grow. It boils down to to reform is to what? The Chinese speak sideways. They don't get straight. Okay. Uh, what does reform boil down to? Yes, seven. Change of behavior. Change of behavior. Anyone else? Yes, Catholic, Daniel. You know what to expect. Catholic answer. <laughs> so one. Um, okay, it's like, okay. Um, to change or reform is basically to not repeat the same sin or again, or like offense. Not repeat the same sin or offense again, again, again. Could you repeat that, please? Um, not to repeat the same, the same sin or offense uh, multiple times, so again, again, change your behavior, change your mind, change your thinking. Change, make changes, okay? Yes, anyone else? Yes, four. Master, um, I, I, I feel that uh, enduring the pain from your ego is um, one of the obstacles that I run across when trying to reform. Okay. Go forth. Hello, Master. Is reform like um, like a fresh start? You you change like you mean it like you reborn. You start a new new start. Very good. Renew yourself. Yes, we mount. Thank you, Master. I was thinking that we probably have spent several lifetimes with some of these transgressions and. That at each level we may think we've reformed, but at each level we may be tested again. Like, do you really mean it? Did you really reform? Absolutely. And then we have we have to face that, um, you know, again and again. Yes. Oh, definitely. Game. Same. Same thing. Repent. You can go so far. Yes. How about reform? Same thing. <laughs> you can go so far. Let's be realistic. Let's stop pretending. Okay? If this is all you can do. This is all you can change. Bottom line. Absolutely. Very good. Yes, sir. One. Um, what about, the, for example, people that have uh, issues with drug addiction or alcoholism? Uh, even though they do repent, do they still reform even though they think uh, because they're still improving towards that goal not using? 
or reform is when they complete the they already completed the say I'm not going to use anymore and they stop at that point. Or reform is it like a, a progressive issue? I don't know. Uh, I can, I'm still struggling with hearing your the answers uh, clearly myself. So. Uh, So reform is a, is a, is a iterative process. It's not going to be because you, because you don't have enough wisdom. That's why you have to have many tries at it. Okay. Hmm. Yes. Uh, eight. Master, I have a question about the previous Hans uh, question. Uh, I think it's not about you are gay or uh, LGBT or not. Um, I think the point is how much you attach to this uh, sexual thing. So my question is, can you get enlightened if you have a strong attachment to anything? You are correct. It's not so much... Uh is your sexual preferences, okay? Because sexual preferences are just sexual preferences. Okay, there's no need to label it and, and disapprove of it. Yes, Master Shiva says, no, you can go to hell and so forth. Okay, change and so forth. I don't look at it that way, personally. Why? Because I saw LGBTQ people become enlightened. That's my, my advantage. So I said, well, if that can happen, that means there's a way for them to become enlightened. Okay? So why do we have to discriminate against them? Okay? And so, uh, so there, there, is a, there is a process, and there is a definitely a way to do it, and therefore... Uh, it's, uh, you're right. It's how badly you want it. We're talking about if you really want it, you have to make sacrifices. If the question about whom he says, I am LGBTQ, I'm not willing, you know, to compromise, then good luck. Wait until you're willing to compromise. Whatever compromise you need to, to make in order to make it. Same thing, no different from, from, uh, from heterosexual people. They need to compromise themselves in order to make it. We all have to, to make sacrifices. That's all. That's all. That's all there is to it. Uh, so for me, uh, I, I started with, uh, with uh, accepting Master Shenhua's uh, teaching as a gospel, like the gospel, when he says, you know, you better change and so forth uh, because it's not normal, it's against the nature. I said, I now, as I get older and I, I, I work through a lot of these issues, I realize it's not necessary to pass judgment like that. He has, you know, whether you like uh, uh, um, pizza versus pasta, it's just, just a different preferences. Okay? You have to compromise. You have to make sacrifice at the right time. That's all. There's no need to label and condemn people. Okay? Condemning people or labeling people is not going to help the world. I happen to see, you know a lot of uh, people who have different sexual preferences than, than normal people, but they're very productive to society. For example, uh, who, what's his name? The uh, CEO, chairman of uh, Apple, what's his name? Huh? Cook, right? Mr. Cook. I think he's part of LGBTQ community, and he's running a very, very... He's do, doing a good job running a company, and that's very useful for mankind, yes? Unlike Google, I'm an Apple fan. 
You see what I mean? I'm grateful for that. It's a useful thing to me. I depend on this. I'm very grateful for this. So do I label him as that, you know, you bad person, you should change? No. Be yourself. Do the best you can to contribute. I will not judge you. Okay? So this is why I differ from my master. The master has different reasons. He says, you know, I need to, you need to make babies. I say, okay, if they don't make babies, adopt babies. Okay? That's way mountain. Um, a lot of the uh, reason for LGBTQ stuff was uh, past life stuff. So um, maybe someone in their past life was a man for many lifetimes, and this time they're born a woman, so they feel inside themselves that they're a, a, a man. I, I, I always thought that made a lot of sense. And also the, uh, you know, the reason they'd be attracted to the different genders. So I, I, that, that's, that's what I thought. I, I, I always thought that probably for a, for a long time. I don't know if you uh, thought that too. Or if I'm right or wrong about that, I have no idea. I have no idea either. I'm not attracted to men, so I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, anyone else? Way Mountain, there's a lot of discussion here. Thank you, Master. Um, I really appreciate uh, your metaphor where, you know, if you like uh, pizza or pasta, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's not something we should judge. And I think the proof is in the pudding because we even accept people who put honey on their pizza. Yeah, I still can't accept that. <laughs> okay, okay, various levels of acceptance, but I just wanted to put it out there that we're very flexible and open. And my, uh, my perspective has been widened as a part of my cultivation, and I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> Way out. <laughs> Master, for me, um, repenting is like wiping the slate clean so then uh, you can have more blessings and continue to cultivate. So reform is like a new improved, inver new improved version of yourself. Yeah. Of course, we all have that. We all have the. You all sort of know what repent and reform really means. But I boil down to two things. Number one, you repent because you don't like yourself. Yes, you don't like yourself. You better repent. Don't 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 try to deny it. Okay, you're only hurting yourself. Why well, have to live like that? You have to like yourself first. You don't like yourself. It doesn't matter if other people really like you, adore you, and, and, you know, and, and worship you. You're still not happy. Agree or disagree? Huh? You have to like yourself first. Yes, you too. Thank you, Master. We have several YouTube comments. Yes. Derek comments. Reform is to make an improvement. Make improvement. Very good. Next. Sophia Gu comments. Master, I think reform involves experimenting with strategies to stop acting on our urges to commit those offenses until we don't have the urge to commit those offenses anymore. That's correct. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, two more. Thank you, Master. Uh, Brady McBride comments, reform your thinking, reform your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one. Thank you, Master. Alex comments, uh, to reform is to unattach the self that created the offense 
and submit yourself to being unobstructed. Very good. Excellent. Can I offer you a little bit more? The key word is more. When you reform, it's in order for you to like yourself more. You like yourself, you're happy, yes? Happiness is predicated upon your liking yourself. You can say, I'm happy, but you're fooling, fooling yourself, you don't like yourself. I'm happy because my wife loves me, but I hate myself. Can you see happiness lasting that long, if that's the case? You see? So you have to like yourself. That's happiness. That's a foundation of happiness. Do I like myself? Hmm? Doesn't matter what Jane thinks of you or Jean thinks of you. It's not important. Do I like myself? It's wrong, for example, for the artists and the performers say, you know, I, I'm loved by so many people. But you don't like yourself. You're still unhappy. Okay? So you like yourself. This is a problem of worldly people. Say, so I'm happy. I like myself. But, but, how long are you going to be happy? At some point in time, you said, can I have more? <laughs> or not? And this is so beautiful. This is a, the Buddhist the Buddhist Dharma is so profound. Because deep down, we're happy, yes? How long is it going to be happy like this, you think? Let's say, remember when you bought that new car of yours? What would you drive? Kia? <laughs> okay. See, how long were you happy? A week? You drive it, you drove it, and you say, mmm, the smell of new car. Oh my God, this is nice. Anyone? That's one of the nicest. Why do you look at me like that? When you drive, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? When you, when, you, when you get a new car, one of the nice things about new cars is that the smell of a new car that you cannot get buying used, like Mr. Buffet. <laughs> Buffet very proudly says, I buy a used Cadillac. Why should I buy a new one and lose 5%, 3% when I drive off the dealer's lot? Because of that smell of a new car. <laughs> I'm helping. I, I'm a friend with new cars, <laughs> auto industry. Anyway, anyway, so you see, so you're happy the smell of new cars, okay, and then how long does the smell last? Then, then pretty soon, a week or two, a month later, the smell is gone, yes? And you walk in the car and you say, something is missing. <laughs> Are you happy? Not as happy as before. Why aren't you facing that yourself instead of sweeping and right now my car is used? No. Buddhism it says, don't compromise. You're happy and Increase your happiness. So reforming is a form of increasing your happiness. You know yourself. Make yourself like yourself more and more and more. Remember when you, when you reform, you repent, you, you, clean, you cleanse yourself more and more and more. That's what happened. You like yourself more ultimately. It's so advantageous, repentance and reform. Agree, disagree. It's so beautiful. You, your model is so static. You say, I'm happy. You only say, I'm happy. You know, you don't, your model doesn't have, I'm happier and happier and happier and happier. That's what life is about, folks. It doesn't say, I'm happy here. That's not enough. That happiness won't last.
So reforming to renew yourself and create an improved version of you. An improved version of you. Improved version of you. If not, you will not be as happy as before. Yes. Five. 저는 이 미국질을 다니면서부터 주변 사람한테 부러움을 많이 삽니다. 요즘 이웃 사람들을 만나면 맨날 절에 간다고 얘기를 하면서도 절 얘기만 하고 이러면 눈이 반짝반짝하면서 굉장히 행복하게 보인다고 부러워들 합니다. 절에 애인이 있냐고 묻기도 하고요. <웃음> 그래서 절에 애인이 있다고 그랬습니다. 그분들도 같은 불자인데 그렇게 절에 다니는 게 좋고 행복하지만은 않다고 자꾸 얘기를 하는데요. 그래서 제가 아직 신심이 없어서 그렇다 이랬더니 어쩌면 신심이 생기는지 좀 가르쳐 달라고 했어. 우리 절에 있는 책들도 많이 갖다 주고 보게끔 하고 이러는데 그렇게 신심이 생기지 않다고 자꾸 얘기를 하거든요. 왜 그럴까요? Uh, since I visited U.S., uh, my neighbors become really envious about my behavior. Uh, anytime I talk about temple, going to the temple, uh, they told me that my eyes sparkle and they become really envious. And they even asked me, do you have a boyfriend in the temple? So I told them, yes. <laughs> um, Repent. <laughs> 저는 부처님이 애인이라고 생각합니다. 예, 절에 안 가면 은 계속 부처님 생각이 나고 뭐 그래서 내 애인은 부처님이다 이렇게 얘기했어요. <웃음> I think Buddha is my boyfriend because if I don't go see him, if I don't go to the temple, I always miss him. I want to see him. I think about him. So I said Buddha is my boyfriend. <웃음> <웃음> uh, I have to ask the Buddha. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, <웃음> we asked the Buddha first. <웃음> Way Mountain, Korean are too creative, yeah. Thank you, I Master. Have to oh. I'm sorry, Master, I didn't finish the translation. Sorry, Diego, let me finish first. Um, so these are my uh, neighbors, but they're also Buddhist, yet they don't have that happiness. And then they're saying, how come you become so happy going to the temple? So I told them, uh, you need to develop sincere mind. So, and then after that, I share our books from our temple, and then they read those books. But still, they don't feel as excited as I am. They don't have a sparkles in their eyes. Um, so why are they not having those uh, happiness that I experience in, in our temple? Thank you. Way Mountain. Why? Thank you. Thank you, Master. Um, what about the people that are like narcissists because they love them so much? Anyone has any idea about narcissists? Amen from Wei Mang. Yes, Master, narcissists, um, they're an interesting case because they appear to be in love with themselves. Um, but underneath that is a core of shame and insecurity that forces them into that behavior. Insecurity? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, they have a fragmented sense of self. And the way that they defend against that is to be very forceful with their personalities in a way that is sometimes overbearing and controlling with others and manipulative of others. They can't be happy then. No, they're not happy. They're often very depressed, but they don't show it. Okay, you heard from the expert. Okay, so why, why is it uh, Ipche's neighbors cannot uh, get much out of it? It takes blessings. When your blessings run out, you can no longer uh, go further. You have no blessings with Mahayana, you cannot get in to Mahayana. It's not that we don't want to help you. We really want to help you, but you're stopping yourself. Hmm. It's amazing. It's like I remember this doctor here who I remember when I was uh, a long time ago, I met this doctor here. Who, he told me about this case. He says, I have a patient. She's legally blind. She can't drive. She can see blurry things only. Sh shadows and forms. She cannot see things clearly. So, and uh, she's in her early 20s. And she came to see him. He says, I've seen many doctors and no one can do anything for me. Okay. Western doctors, Eastern doctors, and so forth. This doctor he happens to be Eastern doctor. So he says, well, let me take a look at you and tell me about, you know, and, 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 and find out more about your condition. So he looked at her and, and talked to her for a long time thoroughly. And he says, there's hope for you. I can help you. So, well, he says, so he says, take this, I'm going to give you a series of herbal medicine. Okay? And you take them one after another. So she did. Took the first medicine, first pack of medicine, and then the next second pack, and so forth. After a while, she says, I'm not seeing any changes. It's no, I don't feel any different. I can't, still can't see. And the doctor says, don't worry, trust me. Hang in there for me. So keep taking the medicine. So she, he prescribed more medicine. And he said, okay. So he took the medicine. And some, one day, he came to him and says, nah. We, I'm taking too many packs of medicine from you. I don't see any change. Okay? I like you. You're a nice person. You're very kind-hearted. But I'm going to stop now. And the man says, please don't stop. Don't stop. We are so close. Don't stop. But she stopped. And she's still legally blind. And he says, when he told me the story, he says, I'm, I cannot cure everything. But these, this, this, the problem she has, the symptoms that she described are exactly what my teacher told me that he helped a person already. So we know we have a step a process to help these people through herbal medicine. And it's documented. I checked my, my notes. I took very copious notes of my masters, my teachers, my, teacher, my, my teacher's instruction. And I got so close. And he says, if he hung, he hung on there, hang in there for a little bit longer, one or two more packs of Eastern medicine, boom, the curtain will be open. But no, she said, no, I'm sorry. 
I don't believe you anymore. Whose fault is it? No one's fault. She simply did not have enough blessings so that she's supposed to remain with that condition. Understand the analogy? If you don't have the blessings, you're not going to follow the instructions. So that's what I need you to be careful about tonight. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm presenting the repentance and reform to you under different lights, unlike the Chinese or the traditional Buddhist approach of repentance and reform, explaining it. Okay? Uh, but most importantly, uh, there are certain people in the world that it's not, they don't have blessings. They do have blessings. We talked about people who don't have blessings, they can't benefit. These are people who have blessings, okay? But they have certain habits they need to repent and reform. Because they're only shooting themselves in the foot. Master Shiwa is very kind. He says this is an illness in this 21st century, in the modern times. People who lie. They are the most difficult person to approach because you cannot pin them down. They get very offended. You try to pin them down. Or manipulative people. It's a form of liars. It's worse than liars. Liars, of course. The manipulative people are much more difficult to deal with. You can't touch them. And they're only hurting themselves. They have the blessings, but they twist it so that they are only hurting themselves. Okay? Bottom line, do you like yourself? Do you approve of yourself? That's the main thing. It's not about me liking you. Hmm? Approving on you, it's not that important. Do you like yourself? Can you like yourself more? Repent, okay, so that I can like myself hmm? for a change. I stop disapproving of myself. Reform is that I like myself more. That's the meaning of life. Life is not static. We are all dying. But we can be happier. We can like ourselves more. What happened to you? You're not shaking anymore. What's the matter with you? <laughs> He's taking a break from shaking. Out. <sighs> enough is enough. <laughs> yes, way mountain. We need to have an update. So iPhone 14 is coming out and it's really cheap. And uh, AT&T, we get like ten, like $1,000 if we trade in. So this one is better, iPhone 14. <laughs> you can tell mine is no iPhone 14, yeah. 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 The, boba getting, the boba is getting bigger. It's 48 megapixel. I see. Okay, okay, good for you. Way Mountain. Uh, thank you, Master. Uh, uh, a week ago, but I didn't remember, but Master told us uh, if uh, when we eat the garlic and onions with the um, mantra, the practice is uh, lest we get the benefit also the in being, the 
came and then the, the leak our leaves. So after I heard that, I'm trying to reduce the <laughs> eating the garlic and onion because in Korean food there's a lot of garlic and onion mm -hmm. <laughs> before. So I didn't, I don't care. But after I heard that, I'm trying to reduce the garlic and onion. But today I heard the Francis story. Oh, she she supported the. Uh, your mention. So I want to share the whole story, but my memory is so bad. So I, I didn't remember the whole story. So can I kindly ask the Francis talk about the whole story? Okay. Is it okay? Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, um, thank you, Hei Yoon. <laughs> um, so so it's uh it's, it started uh, because of uh, my nephew's um, 18th birthday, uh, my sister, my younger sister's son. So it's in it was in February. Um, so they invited us to the house to uh, celebrate his birthday, um, and because my mom has uh, some restriction in her diet, my brother-in-law was cooking, so she, he asked her uh, what, uh, what she would like to eat. And he was cooking spaghetti, and we say, oh, that's fine. Just don't put any salt, and just uh, make it just vegetables and uh, make it plain as possible. And then they, he asked me, what do I want to eat? I say, oh, the same thing what mom was eating, you know, what mom would eat. Um, so the, we went to the party, and uh, he served both of us the same thing. And it was I usually eat very bland, and and uh, but because of no salt, that is actually really really bland for me. Um, also, uh, really really bland for me. Um, so when I look at the sauce, um, and uh, it's the sauce that he made for other people. Uh, he, he saw me looking at it. He said, oh, that had garlic in there. Uh, I said, well, well, you know, going when we go out, just be more, just let's be flexible and not be picky about it. So I taste the sauce and, hmm, this is so good. So I, I put extra scoop of sauce into my spaghetti and I taste more, wow, that's so good. So I put more into my dish. <laughs> So I, I enjoy my spaghetti, and um, so that night I didn't think much about it. That night I had a dreams, and I saw some beans, some young beans. Uh, they were like uh, playing around, and some of them came and licked my lips. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was so wet, and I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. Oh. And it, yeah. I, I remember Master Sun was teaching. He said, oh, my God. So I told the vulnerable, and he said, oh, yeah, that what happened when you eat garlic. <laughs> mm. 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 What she doesn't know that happened during the day as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, YouTube question. Oh boy, I got to recover from that. Uh, sorry. Um, thank you, Master. We have uh, two YouTube questions. Question number one from Alex. Alex asks, Master, today I was repenting for looking for improvement in my practice and hoping for recognition of my positive changes for my cultivation. Recognition and improvement have been my main motivators in happiness my whole life. How do I reform to find happiness in my cultivation without those things? How do you reform? Don't look for it. Stop looking for it. Second question. Thank you, Master. Uh, second question is from Samson Lau. Samson asks, Master, could you share the differences between the different repentance ceremonies we do, like the Great Compassion Repentance and the 10,000 Buddha Repentance? 
Are there certain ways we should repent according to the ceremony? Yes, you do the ceremony and concentrate. That's all. Don't get scattered. Don't do the ceremonies with a scattered mind. Whether it's great compassion repentance, whether it's 10,000 Buddhas repentance, try to not allow your mind to wander off. Okay, it's precious time. Take advantage of it. Okay, anyone else? Yes, seven. Hmm. Hello. Uh, hello, Master. Um, about improving ourselves, uh, could you talk more about your view on accepting ourselves for who we are and improving ourselves? Because sometimes I heard and I feel like we should accept ourselves for who we are and that's how we can be happy about ourselves. Uh, so it feels like it creates some kind of conflicts when I think about these two views. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Yeah, there seems to be a conflict. Uh, I think accepting yourself is what losers do. Because I'm, this is my life, this is me. If I don't accept myself, who's going to accept me? <laughs> so, I think people is overrated when people say accept yourself. That's, uh, that sounds like an excuse to me. I'm uh, not like that. I prefer to look at myself and try to improve. If you accept yourself, how are you going to improve? Yeah, that's what I feel the conflict is. But if I don't accept myself, I'm already unhappy because I don't accept myself. Yeah. <laughs> and it feels like I have to keep improving so I don't see an end to this. So I, I know, oh, this is like, it feels like a dead end. I will keep being unsatisfied with myself every step of the way. Because you're thinking too much. That's why you're unhappy. doesn't matter what you do, you're still unhappy because you keep on thinking about it. So you're right. If you, if you think about it, there's no end to it. If you stop thinking about it and do it, then there will be an end to it. Hmm? You answer yourself. When I think about it, I'm going to be unhappy. You're right, because you're doing it wrong. Think too much. Anyone else? Last chance, nine. 네, 안녕하세요. 어, 이제 곧 어, 미국에서 한국으로 돌아가는데 너무 많은 분들께 감사하다는 말씀을 전달 드리고 싶어서 네, 마이크를 들었습니다. 여기 어, 계시는 분들 너무 친절하시고 따뜻하고 어, 맛있는 음식도 정말 많고 어, 정말 즐겁고 행복한 수행 시간 보내고 집으로 돌아가게 되었습니다. 감사합니다. Hi, it's about the time for me to leave US and go back to Korea. So I'd like to show my appreciation to many people here. They're kind and warm, and also they, are, they provide me with a lot of delicious food. I was really joyful and happy, and I'm going back home. Thank you so much. Okay. Anyone else would like to say anything to her? She's saying goodbye. We talked about saying goodbye, huh? <laughs> Go for us. Thank you, Master. Um, I'm so happy that I get to see our Dharma brother and sister from Korea. I'm so sad that I couldn't be there to say goodbye to you, but I wish 
uh, in the future we'll get to see each other again. Have a safe trip where you are and a lot of love sent from Go Force to you and your family. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, and that's from Go Forest. Anyone else? Come again. Be happy. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, in the back. Three. Is it two? Three. Bye. See you next time. There you go. <laughs> okay, thank you all. Uh, we stop here tonight.